All right, what do we got? We got the uh, Kohong Resort Nine Hole Cup, and it looks like they have uh, all brand new hole locations. So they've changed the tee spot. So and my experience with other courses, taking like the Oasis as an example, um, the new pin placements are pretty dramatic on some of the holes. Like the way we used to come at them does not work anymore. So I'd be curious to see what they've done on these holes. Hole number one at Kohong. Now I have no idea where the pin is, but let's let's think about what we've done in the past. So. In the past, th this hole has a lot. Eh, if I can grab my freaking pan, hold on. I gotta rotate the screen so I can grab my pan. All right. Now let's see if I can not get it lost again. So <clears throat> one on one, probably the the easiest way to play this hole is to lay it up right here, and you've got a rough bump, a nice T rough bump that you can do right here. You can backspin it. Put a little bit more backspin on and, and go straight out the cut, but you have some options over here. There is an adjustment that we need to make in order not to get in that sand if you're doing the rough bump. It's pretty narrow in there, so you really want to work on that number. But that is probably a one-on-one. -on -one, that's probably the, the safest shot. We have a, a bunch of options on this hole. We can do, there's several max overpower hooks that we can do where we're coming through this area trying to bleed it onto the green. I've been caught up in this rough and I've been in this sand I don't know how many times trying to get through that gap. Um, it's not, I, I would rather take any shot from down here because down here really it boils down to if you hit it perfect it goes in the hole. You can also bring out a bigger ball and an APOC and try and go straight at it. Now depending on which way the wind's blowing you might be able to do it with other clubs but um, we have a lot of opportunities on this side to try and get on the green. Now, a lot of people are going to shoot and go for a layup shot that's somewhere in this area or in this zone, somewhere in here going straight to the cup. Anytime you're on a par four and you can get on the green or right off the green to one, I mean, you, you really, it's the risk versus reward, but I can tell you that the risk is is that you might end up in the rough or the sand down in this area, but once again, we're down, if you hit it perfect, it goes in the hole. Um, the reward would be is if you're in the clear down here, you're in the, you're definitely in the catbird seat. Let's see where the new pin is. Let's go check it out and see where the new pin's at. I'm going to take my number five bag. I'm not sure about ball yet, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go test it out. Um, I don't want to do the checkpoint challenge. I want to do the Kohan Resort nine hole cup here we go now the max overpower hook shot that you can do over there I can't remember exactly where we've set that up in the past but you can do it with a, <clears throat> an APOC an extra mile a rock depending on what ball you bring out and what your club inventory is you can find a club that will work over there on that max overpower hook. If we can get an opponent, we'll be able to see what hole number one looks like. Maybe. Just finished up the fall major, had a fantastic front nine and then fell apart. Collapsed like a cheap chair on the back. I couldn't get anything going and I couldn't get anything to fall in the hole. I was on track, two of my left, right on the front cup, front lip. Had a rough back nine. Rough. That's the way it rolls. Let's see which way my opponent's going. They got a white ball. You can see where their red line's at. So you can see if you bring out a bigger power ball, you could get quite a bit farther up there. What you want is a tailwind where you can get... <laughs> you can really use the wind and start off in front of the sand trap. So where you really want to get is up into that area right there. Two, three. I'm going to move two rings, which is three miles an hour. Oh, 
hitting it perfect. <coughs> we'll see what trajectory that's on. Almost got it back up there. Almost. I needed to come in a little bit more to the right to get me on track, but with the way the wind was blowing and with a three power ball, I had to move it to the left in order to leave enough room for it to get its, uh, be able to sneak in there. Now, once again, I'm in that area where if it's perfect, it's in the hole. I'm not sure on this particular hole, any pin placement's gonna make any difference. It does look like the pin is actually out in the open more where you might actually be able to get up there before it was a little bit more behind the sand trap. And so there, there really was no run at it if you actually made it over. But here it looks like there is a little. I just need to hit it perfect. Hitting it perfect. Getting a hole. That's what I'm talking about. Dead center perfect. So you can get the eagle on it down there. It really, those short shots from down there, sand or rough, it's all about if you hit it perfect, it goes in the hole. I mean, it's not a bad, it's not a bad area to be in the rough or the sand, although you would rather be in the fairway. We have a ton of options on hole number one, so. But I believe that the way I'm going to be playing it all week is exactly like I played it there, only I'll bring out a bigger ball. Um, the goal is to try and get in front of this zone where you can get all the way into this pocket, because then you can kind of go straight at it. And it just becomes a matter of, of hitting it perfect, as opposed to starting it off over here where you have to use curl. And then it's a blind shot, so you have no idea like really where it's going to go, whether you're going to over curl it and end up in the sand, or if it's going to get under curled and end up out here, so it's kind of a blind shot. If you can get in front of that, especially if you've got, like with a headwind, even with a five power ball, I'm not sure you could get in front, but with a tailwind or a pure sidewind with a five power ball, you can get in front and just going to go straight out the cap. PD is a ball manufacturer. They sell balls and they sell them for this particular shot. And that's the deal. And it's funny, like people want to keep their head in the sand about it, but it's, oh, well, rookies got to use white balls. Hey, they sell these balls to everybody. I, I haven't seen anything on there that says only experts or pros can buy a ball. That's how it works. Hole number two, hole number two, what is hole number two? All right. Now, I've always in the past, in one-on-one, -on -one, I do a plus 30 here with whatever I'm coming in. I usually try and start off in this area and bring it down to the cup, not trying to bounce off of anything, but trying to start off on the green side and then bring it back around to it. Let's, let's, let's pull out a marlin. I don't know that I need anything more than a marlin. You could potentially need a quasar or something with a little bit of side spin if you're trying to bring it around, but we will see. Seems like I've been on this hole a bunch of times with a uh, a marlin and shootouts, and it was more than enough. I'm gonna stick with my my normal now, and I'm not sure that it's right, but like normally in one on one, I usually it's so far downhill. I usually start off with a 30. And that very well could be wrong. But I'll bet you it's it's close. I go first. I definitely want to be on this side. There's men, uh, men club. And I think I was using a max number and 30%. Let's be blue ring off. Hey, hey, where I can see you. Yeah, and you'll definitely need a bigger side spin ball. 
much mo. Let's bring a katana. Let's let's bring some let's bring some heat. Two point seven, three point five one rings. If I can get it off in time. Ran out of time. That area seemed, and you know what the deal is? I, I'm, of course, dumb ass me. I'm thinking, what? Why is that not working? It's not working because they moved the pins. Duh. <laughs> Hello, McFly. I was like, why isn't that working? I know that I've come here a thousand times with a freaking Marlin. Obviously. Obviously. So maybe we need a katana. <laughs> the thing about a katana is I'm probably really, really close to my red line right here. I was at men before. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that might be a little too close. Although, if I bring out a bigger power ball, I could take this with my long iron. So, 2.6 is 3.38 rings. Three point four rings, so that's a max number at mid club plus thirty percent. And I hit a great. See if it's even close. I'm gonna have to go back and watch that. See if I hit. Did I hit that great to the right or the left? It seems to that I hit it on the right, and it came in on the right, so at least that's good news. It's really weird when you're playing. If you record your own video and you go back and watch your own video, the, the deal is, is how much you, you're not paying attention. You're in the moment. You're playing the game, and you're, you're paying attention to it, but it's, you're just moving along and going through the motions and not really... Uh, letting it absorb in. So you go back and watch the video and you're like, wow, what was I thinking? Or, all right, all right. So we do have a new pin placement there. So I think on that hole, with the way that the spot is, I almost think bringing out a Kingmaker and playing it with my Grizzly, that would give me, I had, I was right up against my red line with a two power ball. That would give me a couple of rings of separation to work out any kind of headwind. I could pull back a little from the red line in the setup. So we do have some options with the new spot there, but I'm almost thinking I'm, I might bring out a bigger power. It's either that or we need to bring out a, a zero power three or four side spin ball so that we can use our sniper. Those are, I mean, those are going to be our two options there. So hole number three. Hole number three. What is hole number three? Kohong Resort. Hole number three. All right, so in the past, we've always come down into this zone right here. And we're trying to do, we have, we have multiple options on the other side. There's a spot here when you're on the green side. It comes off of this sand trap. And it goes down and it comes down and then it comes off to the green. And so this area where the little blue check is right there is this area. It's really steep. And you can do, it's a fairway rough bump. You can get, you can set your shot up so that it's coming in here. And so what happens is, is that it, it's so steep on this that your ball slips when it hits the ground. And instead of just doing a straight bounce up, it slips. And when it slips, it's got all of that backspin on it and you're doing or with your spin, it acts like a rough bump. It actually just goes from that point and it it may take a couple small little bounces and then just runs off towards the hole. So this hole, if they, depending on where they put the cup, if it was me, I would have put the cup 
maybe either f way farther back because right now it's kind of like if you split it and it's in the front part dead center and putting it off to the side where this tree is more in play coming off down here and trying to get if you're if you're playing this hole for the first time and you're thinking wow i'm just going to try and drive it all the way down here so that i can get down into this range where you're in short iron the landing spot down here almost always puts you behind that tree and that's a huge, I, I would rather take this shot because you got a beautiful shot at it. And at the top of this little area right here, it's absolutely flat. And then the rough starts and then it drops off from the rough. So you can get way up to the front here um, in this area. It's pretty safe. Let's see where they put the flagpole. I'm just going to go and I'm just going to go try and get on the just put it in the right spot so I can see what the shot looks like to the green from the old position and we'll see what we need to do different I'm still not sure that there's any spot that they could put the flagpole on the green we're going to the left and trying to go all the way down to the end would be beneficial because that tree is definitely in play and that tree I suppose you could hit past the tree but once you start getting down into that zone, it's hard to get past the tree. Thanks, George. For joining the channel. Here we roll. And I know that there was an adjustment that we were doing towards the cut, but I cannot for the life of me remember what it is. So I'm just going to play my club wherever it's at in the club at a straight up number. And we want to try and take this drive without doing any overpower. <laughs> My opponent's going to like that area down there. That's nice. Nice shot. Nice shot. Nice shot, man. They almost overhit. Two nine, one point five per ring. There's three, and that second bounce was in the rough, so I'm gonna put some curls to bring it back to the fairway. Hitting perfect, so it should put me two rings off right here. And then it should put me two rings off down there. Now it's all about rolling off <laughs> and rolling out into the rough. <coughs> I'm hitting it too far. I could have used the win and stayed there and really tried to go for it to get down here on the end. But you can see how close that tree is. It's almost impossible to hit. I mean, you can, but it's such a narrow landing area to hit past the tree and not end up in the rough. So that you have a straight up shot to the cup. And if my opponent would have hit far, farther forward, much farther forward, they would have started putting the tree into play. So the tree is in play for a long time because of how close it is to the cup. Nice. Nice. Nice, nice baby. So we can recover from here. We've got a nice little shot to recover. It's a sticky area right there. See if we can hit it perfect. It's going to be short no matter what. Hmm. 
it did roll out. That's good news that it rolled out. Well, we know where the pin placement is on that. I, I actually don't know that that pin placement is going to be that bad. I think if we're doing the the rough bump in the front, it's, we're probably not going to be able to do that. It's too far back now, so we'll have to go. We'll have to go at it. The fairway rough bump, I should say. Let's go look at that hole again. Let's let's take one good strong look at it. So the it's pretty much on the same line, but it is in, it is farther back. And there was a sticky spot from where I was where I was getting that. I if I'd hit in the fairway, we're talking wood range to get over to this side. So that Nirvana is a long iron, basically. It's 129, 135. I think 129, 135 is your best Goliath. So you know it's the longest hitting long iron out there. So if you wanted to take off off this, if you were in the fairway here, you'd be able to take this shot off of here and bringing it over with a long iron, or you could start off on the other side with a wood. It'll probably be better to start off on the other side so that you don't get that uh, <clears throat> where the ball guide's appearing and disappearing. You might be able to have a better shot. Let's play that hole one more time. Let, let's play it one more time and let's try and actually get in the gosh darn fairway. Here we roll. I'm pretty sure we were playing this with a katana. Although if you were hitting off of the upper and then trying to bounce it over to the green side, a bigger power ball might help you. It might put you more like, especially if I find myself sometimes where I'm in between, I'm in between mid and minimum or I'm in between mid max and you can change the ball and you can you can change the setting so you're either at max or you're either at mid. Usually I find it's better to be at mid. The club's a little more accurate, number one. Am I out of katanas? I am. Let's buy some katanas. Let's choose the ball. Let's try not to get into the freaking rough this time. We're actually not trying to get out there very far. Four mile an hour. I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a 20 20 percent. 25 actually. Hit it one ring great to the left. And that should have no bearing whatsoever on this shot. Okay, that was a nice little layup. Straight angle to the hole. I think I'd put more curl on it, but that's just me. All right. Let's just do a straight up. I'm going to be, it's got to be Max Club, so. And I hit that far back. I do need more distance than that. If I'm going to use a katana. Puts me three quarters of a ring into power. I, th I thought I left myself enough room, but I didn't. Hitting it perfect. Just a bit too hot. 
I probably needed to do a plus one there. So, one to one plus one. I know that the adjustment coming into the cup here has been really mild in the past. I mean, it's like a slight adjustment. Theoretically, if the game math was correct, if you were hitting up to the top where I was hitting, up on this pad right here, you would do one. But if you were hitting to the green side, see how much lower it is, you would do another adjustment. It would be different. But that's if everything worked the way it's supposed to, and I'm not sure that it always does. All right, we have a good, I think we have a good shot on that hole, but we, I definitely want to get farther than what I can get with my rock. I don't mind hitting over, because usually in one-on-one, -on -one, I hit over from that side, and then I hit it over the sand, and then just run it out there. So I don't mind hitting from that side. And because you're pulled back from your, your red line on the drive, you could use a big topper. My opponent's using a thorn. Gotta like that thorn when it gets that ball guide where you can actually see where the backspin tail is going to go. Just for that right there. Nice. Nice shot. Nice shot. All right, hole number four. Hole number four. What is hole number four? All right, this hole right here, oh, this is a hole that I hope, that, and obviously they made a change right here where they've changed the hole, but we can do, this is another one of these holes that even though this is all fairway, we can do a fairway rough bump on this side of the hill. So from this hill, it goes, it goes this fairway pad, and then it goes down into the canyon, and it comes up, and then you got the second fairway pad. So this is fairway pad number two. This is fairway pad number one. And I see people all the time that are hitting on, you know, they're either trying to bounce it off of this side going over it, and it very seldom ever works out like they want. It's always better to get closer to the hole. And, and on this side right here, it's coming down and then it's coming to the green. This area right here, you can use this where the closer you scoot down to the bottom. Now there's a certain spot where you're gonna get you're gonna get off the hill and you're gonna get on the flat and then all of a sudden the bounce is gonna become normal. But there is a zone here where when your club hits, instead of going up on the bounce, it's gonna go flat out on the bounce. And so you're basically using this fairway area as a rough patch because of how steep it is. And usually with a little bit of backspin, you hit in that area and it'll it'll slide and then the backspin kicks in and the ball will just stay on the course. It won't do any more bouncing. Or just little teeny skip bounces. And so this one was, the, the pin was dead center in the middle of the fairway and I think we were doing plus 10%. And this is the most hole in one -able par three in the game. And they need holes like this. They need holes that we come to. So I'm hoping that they didn't screw this too bad if they really wanted to screw it really bad, they should put the green as close to the front as possible because that's going to make this extremely difficult to do from the front side. And you may have to take this irregular shot from the rear. Um, so we'll have to see where they put the pin placement on this. I'm not too excited that they've uh, changed this hole. We will see if we can find an opponent. That's a big if. Since we're not getting any trophies when we practice, why are we waiting for somebody? And I did always like it when you had the opportunity to win a trophy, but I can see it from Playdemic's perspective. They don't. If we did a shootout right here, they're giving us a hole for free that we didn't have to spend a practice token on. And when we're out here doing these practice things, we're not winning stuff, so it all benefits them. Oh yeah, that pin placement's awesome though. Grizzly.
There's Max Club. There's Min. There's Min. So I'm right at mid. So it's 4.4 4 plus 10%, that's 4.8. <clears throat> There's 4.4. 4. Oh, fuck, I knew I, I let that go too soon. Damn it. I think it's still a very hole in one, but I think it's still, I think we're still in the zone. I played this hole a lot from the Protees, and you're in your wood. I was, I was thrown off a little bit there by playing it with my Grizzly. <laughs> it seemed like it should have been a wood shot. And it would have been much better if I'd hit it perfect. L. Perfecto would have been perfect. I think I would have been in the hole. I think. My opponent hit it perfect. And it did not go in the hole. This is definitely a hole that we want to get our number down on. If there's any hole in here that we really want to practice and get our number down on, this is definitely one of those holes. Because we we're gonna have a serious chance at hole in one every time we come here. I find these dunks dunks used to be. No, I'm not gonna say that they were easy. I mean, you still had to hit the shot, but now the dunks don't seem to be quite as fun as they used to. They're, they're dangerous as hell now. It's a draw. All right. All right. I like our chances on that hole right there. And, and they haven't, they've changed it, but they haven't screwed it up, which is good. And I'm out of practice though, because I have that thing and I didn't get any shots on it. What a bummer. Hold on. Hold on. All right. All right. I had to switch accounts. If you guys, so for everybody who's always going like, Hey man, you playing with those clubs and rookie, um, now they'll have a real reason to bitch. <laughs> hole number five. Let's go look at hole number five. Hole number five. All right. All right. So there are a ton of ways to play this hole. So in one-on-one -on -one play, I always play to just hit out here. You can do it with a rock, a QB, your accurate bag, your number two bag. You can get into those shadows it's better if you're playing in one-on-one -on -one and you're using a marlin and you only have one side spin you want to get farther out here because if you're out in this area when you're coming to the cup you got to negotiate around this rough area so you have to pull out and you need more side spin to get back to the to the hole in the old pin placement this is a massive green so if I was trying to pick a spot here to really screw people up and really make this a difficult hole, I would put the cup way back here in the back. Because what you can do is, in one-on-one, -on -one, you've got this shot right here. The other way you can go is to lay it up right up into this area. And I see a lot of people do this, but I see a, I see a big portion of them epic fail where they end up in the rough. Now, it's not that you can't recover from the rough there. You can't recover from the rough over here. So you screw up in the rough over here and you're done. That's why you want to bring out an accurate bag. And you can set up three rings off of this with a rock or a QB and do a max curl shot. You don't even have to do any overpower. And you'll get into this zone with a one power ball. With a three power ball, you can get like way out into the shadow. But you can lay it up right here. You can also do a max overpower hook shot this way where you get a bounce right in this zone and then you're trying to bleed out into here. Or you can do, and you can do this shot with several different clubs. Ball combos, you'll have to practice it with what you have in your bag. You can come down in this area with an APOC and a bigger power ball 
and bring it around and just max curl it. You can also do a max curl shot and a max overpower hook shot from the right hand side coming this direction. Now, I believe if you're coming from the right, I'm not sure that we were using, I think we were using just like a katana ball. There is a rock right out in this zone right here. And, and I believe this is one of those ones I'll have to take the shot several times to get the landing zone right. But there is a, there is, I was, I think we were aiming towards the edge of this to try and get out into this zone to get our bounces over. And if you use a ball that's got the right side spin so that you can avoid one of the one of the things about coming from this side is you may over if you can get over you may over hit it and end up in the rough over here but you can end up right out in front where you have a long iron shot straight to the cup I'm gonna try the shot coming from this direction starting off into this zone and I think the deal up in here is that you really need a four side spin ball Let's see here, because in this account, I have, I'm going to take my number one bag, which is going to be the bag I'm going to use on every, every hole, I think. And I had to write these numbers down because these are clubs that I don't normally use, so I had to remember, remember, let's think about what kind of ball we want to use here. See, the deal here is, is that I'm, I really want the four side spin, but that means I'm not going to be able to get into the two top spin boost. So it's kind of a waste of a, and I'm not absolutely sure that I need a four or a five power ball. Let's go side spin. Let's do side spin first. Let's see what we got for options here. That's a three power, four side spin boost. Uh, backspin boost, side spin five, and that might that might work. I'm not sure if it, if we can get it done. I think we can get it done with a three power ball. <coughs> if not, this ball right here will work. The blood sucker ball. Kohan Resort practice hole number five. Here we roll. Here we roll. See if we can get uh, see if we can get around the band. If I can't get around the band with an APOC seven, then I guess I can't get around the band. If I can get an opponent. There's a lot of different ways to play this hole, and the deal is, I think, the mass majority of the time, especially when you're a one-on-one, -on -one, to get up and down is going over to the right-hand side. I never really liked the shot if you go straight forward and lay it up. If you lay it up, you have some options, though. You can bounce off the island, you can backspin it onto the green, you can do a rough bump down there. You do have some options. Still think I'm gonna over hit that. Seven one. It's one point two. That'd be like six rings. Hitting it perfect. I almost would have rather hit that one ring on the inside. Nope. That was that was perfect. 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 There's not a lot of room for error down there. If I'd hit that one ring great to the left, it would have came out through the rough 
and it's falling off to the left so it's very unlikely that it would have went through unless it hit the rock and bounced back out I thought I left myself enough room for a great to the right but from where that first bounce was there was not enough room for a great to the right you can do a max curl shot from over here as well and there's overpower hook shots from over here Oh, they're laying it up. I thought maybe for a second they were going to do a max overpower hook shot and try and get it over, but I was like, I don't think that's the way to set that up, dude. <laughs> now it's all becoming clear. Okay, where am I? Where am I? There's Max Club. There's Man. So I'm in mid Falcon. Mid Falcon's 1.8 per ring. So 7.6 divided by 1.8. It's 4.22 rings. straight up I think I sh probably should have did oh and I was thinking I should have added some on so that was the side to hit it hit it wrong to <laughs> if I had hit it perfect it have missed on the other side of the cup I needed to do like a five or ten percent adjustment on that a pin placement will work but that pin placement is going to make it more pronounced with what I was talking about right there but they do have a rough bump. I do not like these types of rough bumps. Because you have to get so close to the right hand edge that if you hit it great to the right, you miss the rough, which is pretty important when you're doing a rough bump. And if you hit it great to the left, now you're in the shit. Now you're going to end up in the rough. You're going to stay in the rough. So the only option you have on a shot like that is perfect. So if you hit perfect a lot, you probably like them, but like that was a two ring great to the left. I'm surprised that that made it out. All right, so we know what that hole looks like. We, we know we have some options. There's, there's a bunch of different ways to get over to the other side and you have to play it to your club strengths. And so you have to find out what combination that you have, whether you have to bring out a bigger ball and you're using a rock or a QB because you need the curl to try and get it over. Or if you're coming from the right, you can use an extra mile or an apocalypse. There's, you have a lot of different ways that you can approach that hole to get over to the other side. But for my money, it, it is worth trying to get over to the other side. Consistency-wise, you hit out here, you can find a spot, you can find the spot, you can find the spot, you can find the spot, and you got a wood shot every time. And where the pin is now... is the pin is back over on this side so that coming from this direction and trying to hit it out there far so that you can get past this is going to be even more pronounced if you're going to hit it straight forward you either need to bring out a big side or a ball that's got some side spin or you need to hit it farther out there so that you can clear the path and have a straight shot at it if you leave your ball short here um, you're going to you're almost going to have to do the rough bump because you may not be able to get it around the band if you don't. I'm going to continue to try and get over into this zone. And I like I like going... The last few times we've played this hole, we've come at it from this direction. And the thing I like about this direction, the pros, are that if you can make it over to the other side, you're already going in this direction. So that means that you're... you're trying to maximize how far you can get on the drive to get as far down into this as possible. And normally you're like right in this area. If you can like get a hold of it. Like this is kind of the zone. I don't know that I've really been any farther than that. But it but you do take the risk of being OB. 
you got an OB thing that you have to go over and you got to go over it blind. And I've gone down in here and it's clipped the rocks and hit the rock on the other side and came out and came out on the other side and then it's been all fine and I've been in here where I've ended up in the drink. Whereas if you go this direction, it's unlikely that you're going to get OB. But if you really screwed it up and you got behind those trees, those trees are in play. And you can get behind this rock and it's in play and it can be difficult to get up there. So, um, But you're less likely to get OB if you, if you come at it from this direction. The thing is, is that if you really get a hold of it, now your, your trajectory is going down this fairway and it does run out. The angle that I was on coming through, coming through this zone, trying to pick up a little bit more distance, um, you know, if I would have terminated in the rough, it would have been up in this area. It's pretty close. So we do have some options here. We do. That'll all be on like what kind of clubs you have and how comfortable you are taking, taking max overpower hook shots because there's three or four different ways that you can do the max overpower hook shot on that hole. And I'm sure once Dunner and I got there, because Dunner will want to do, we'll probably end up doing the, the overpower hook shot on the right hand side. This is another tough hole. Now, depending on where they put, I believe if you could get far enough up in here, there was a rough bump that you could do off of this, but I'm not sure depending on where they put the, the pin. And it's not super easy to get way up in there because like angle wise, let's draw a line. Like if we wanted to get way up into this zone, we're drawing a line back to the tee box. We're gonna have to start off here and then bring our ball back up into this zone. I don't think that we, I, I don't think, no matter what ball you bring out, I don't think you can start off on the other side. you got to start off on this side here. So let's, let's look at what our, we'll go out there and take a, I'll take a, I'll take a Titan. The king, the king of balls. And I'm only going to be playing with this bag. You don't need another bag when you have this bag. Kohung Resort, hole number six. Let's see this hole number six. Practice, practice, practice. All right, let's see if we can get it done. Or at least get an idea where the pin placements are. Starting off the week the same as every other week. You just go out and you're just playing the holes and you don't really care. You're not, it's, it's all about trying to make sure that you know what ball and club combo you need. Then you can start, and then you can really go on the hole and it's like, okay, this is the shot that I'm going to commit to. Sometimes you find that you work to get into a certain area and then after a couple times of taking that shot, you're like, wow, this sucks. So go find another spot. Yeah, I think even with a bigger power ball. Three divided by 1.2, 2.5 rings. Hitting it perfect. We'll just see what that looks like down there without trying to do anything special. Just like lay it up out there and see what it looks like. Because if I'd have brought out a bigger power ball, I could have started off on the other side and I could have used the wind. The deal about a shot like that was the margins were so close that if you had any kind of headwind, you're definitely not going to be able to do that shot. So you're going to need to know what your options are.
Let's see what they can get done with a white ball. Perfect. Perfect. And that's usually a pretty good area to start off in. And one on one, that's that's the zone. Okay, there's Max Cataclysm. There's Min. So I'm at Mid Cataclysm, which is 1.5 per ring. So 2.9 divided by 1.5. <coughs> I'm going to do a two ring pool. See if I can hit something perfect today. Hitting it perfect. See how close we can get. Pretty close. Need to take a little teeny bit off, like minus one or minus two, or minus five percent. And it was 1.93, and I rounded it up to two. Instead of dropping it down to the 1.9. That could have been the difference right there. It's a rounding error. Is it 2.9? 2.9. I did a 5%. I think that would have been right. I think a point if I did a, the 0 0.9 instead of the 2.0, I still I would have been right on the edge. I, I mean it might have fallen in, but I needed to take off 5% there. All right, we know we got some info on that hole though. So far, I'm not so sure that the pin placement stuff has really drastically changed any of the stuff on this course yet. Hole number seven. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. This hole number six. Hole number seven. All right, this is another one of those holes in one on one. You almost always want to play down to here. You have a, you have several options to get over. You can bounce off the island. You can do a rough bump. You can backspin it up on the other side, and it's all right there. There is an adjustment, and I believe if you're coming from this direction, there is like an adjustment, like a 20, or I mean, it's it, there is an adjustment that you need to make from this side, especially if you're doing the rough bump. And I think headwind really affects like, and we've been seeing it recently in the game where head and tailwind are affecting the ball even more than in the past. The other way you can try and come at it is to go this way. And I will tell you that like I, I've ended up out here a lot, like actually making it all the way across and in the clear is pretty difficult. And I've done a rough bump off of this where you bleed out and you're out in this area right here. And the problem with the current pin placement is it seems like it'd be pretty easy to get around there. But this little peninsula that sticks out really hampers the deal. Like, like where you really want to get is in front of it so that you can go right at the cup. And it's it, usually from the angle down here to get to the cup, you really need side spin. So I'll be curious to see where they put the cup. I mean, as a player, I would like them to put it down low on the back side so that it opens this shot up. But from Play Demic's perspective, I would have put it farther back in the back up at the top, which makes this shot from over here, these shots a little bit more difficult. And it makes and it doesn't really improve this one much. <laughs> Let's see what they did. Let's go. Let's go check it out. What what shot do I want to take here? I I want to go. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the in one on one play. I always play to the right, but I'm gonna play to the left here, and I'm gonna try and curl it around. So I'm gonna bring a three side spin ball. We'll bring a kingmaker. 
this might be a good area for a 444. Might, might just be. Let's see. Power. What kind of 444s do we got? 442. 442. I'm going to highlight that just because if I find myself in a situation where I need, I think I need more, I'll be able to switch to a 4 power. Rookie. Hole number 7. Practice, 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 practice. If I can find an opponent. We played these Kohang Resort holes quite a few times, and there's a bunch of these holes that I... I I'm not sure... It seems like I, I have won a tournament that's on these holes, but I usually am like, I take a ton of risks on these holes. These are holes to go out and have fun on. Where there's like at least two, if not three of the holes doing max overpower curl or max overpower hook shots. Yeah, and I'm not sure... There is a max overpower hook shot that we can do here, but I think that might actually be even a bigger power ball. And with that wind, I could make it over. can't make it over I, I well that'll make it over but that'll definitely end me up in some shit down here on the end that was seven that was I can't believe that that was great that looked beyond good What my opponent's doing here, trying to stretch it out and bounce it over to get it to go up the deal is, is definitely the way to go. This would be one of those ones where if you've got one of the toss fan boost balls, it could uh, definitely help you out on the other side because it's usually about getting enough so you don't, like you, you almost plan to do the rough bump so that you can stop on the fairway. I'm in my Spitfire. There's Max. I'm at mid club right there. It's four per ring. I'm in the eight per ring now. Eight per ring. Be a half a ring, be a little less than half a ring. There's two, there's three, and a little. Two rings great to the left. Well, put me two rings great to the left, which from that distance is about two cups. So Those clubs are super accurate when you get them down into the quarter and the half and the eighth of a <clears throat> eighth of their distance. Let's see if my opponent can get their Nirvana in. Perfect. I would have liked to have hit perfect. Ooh, that barely missed that rough. Barely. So I think we do have some options. I think I, I think that I could have hit that shot better. 
But I'm gonna go, let's go back and play that hole one more time and do what my opponent did and see what that, that's, that's pretty much gonna be the zone out there. I think they had some three power balls that were out not too long ago that had some top spin boost. As you can use um, from that area down there, I don't think you have to bring out a bigger power ball and I'm not sure that they have any one or two power balls that have top spin boost. I can't remember. See if there's any. Do I have any top spin boost balls? It's a three power five top spin boost, two side spin. That would definitely work. That would definitely work in that area. I'm going to bring out, I think you can do it with just a katana. So I'll bring out a katana and we'll see. We'll see. I think that the deal there is is that. In most cases, you're probably going to be clipping the rough unless you bring out a ball that, or if you got enough topspin on your club or if you got a, a ball that's got some topspin. Ricky, practice, hole number seven. Let's practice that one more time. Let's be serious about it this time. So I'll lay it up down on the bottom and we'll see what we can get done. So if you had an extra mile nine, I'm sure you could get down to that zone. You might be able to get, we'll have to see. I can't remember on this hole if there's always the clip on the rough coming out, because you can't really put any, if you're gonna bounce it over, you can't really put on, overpower's not gonna help you. We'll see. I go first. I go first. There's my red line, so I got plenty of room. All the top spin, however much side spin I can get on. Yeah, I think no matter where you hit up there, you can see like if I put curl on it, am I gonna clear that second bounce? because <clears throat> I need to do max curl so 3.8 it's 1.2 per ring so there are 3 rings is 3.6 I'm going to do 3 and a third I'm going to do max curl just because I want to see where it comes out was able to swing it around swing it we'll see where I'm at in my club this will be the determining factor on whether or not like okay hey you can do it with a three side spin ball and you can do it with a two power but would a kingmaker be better and so on the drive it doesn't need to be a kingmaker but on this second shot depending on where your red lines are it may make a difference Especially if it can get you into a better club. So if it can get you into your short iron, or if it can get you into your wedge, or if it can get you into, you know, the next club down the list, those clubs are going to be more accurate. And you're going to see a lot of people doing that this week. It's going to be a popular area. They set up a lemonade stand. The Falcon. The B-52, so I'm at Max Falcon. Max Falcon's 1.3 per ring, so 2.2 divided by 1.3. Be 1.7 and be 1.8. 1.8 rings. Isn't it perfect? That was dead center perfect, too. Boom! Shakalaka. And that was just a straight up max adjustment. 
it's going to be a tough area to get into. The thing about that starting zone is, is that I'm going to have to go back and watch that video because I did on the wind, I did, I over pulled it about 10, 20%. But from where that first bounce was, when I go back and watch the video, it looked like it really carried it down in there. So if we've got a tailwind there, you're really going to want to make sure you're so close to the transition that you're really going to want to make sure you work the wind out right. Otherwise, it'll carry it too far and you'll just end up in the rough. <laughs> nice. All right. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. All right, where were we? I had to take a break there for a second. I had to talk to a man about a horse. Where are we at here? We are on hole number eight. All right. There. Okay. This is another one of those holes. I think there's coming down to the cup. In one-on-one -on -one play, it's almost always hitting from up here and then coming down. But I think in tournament play, I've... I've been hitting from down here, like down low, somewhere in this zone, and then trying to bring it to the cup. This will be a hole that will be interesting to see where they put the pin, because there are some bad spots on this green that if they put the pin, it could be very dangerous to get to those areas. Funny story about this hole. We came here one time, and and it seemed, I'm pretty sure this is the hole. I We had a setup that week. People were hitting hole in one. I came down here. I couldn't hit hole in one, but I hit a great to the right and bam, it went in the cup. And then I hit perfect and it was off. And then I hit a great to the right and bam, it was in the cup. And so when the weekend round came, I was like, screw this. Let's just go with the flow. <laughs> and let's just set it up and then hit a great to the right and it'll go in the cup. And I came out here and I purposely tried to hit a great to the right and I hit two greats to the right and missed the cup both times. And then came out here in my proxy account and went, screw it, that's not working. And hit a perfect and it was in the cup. Damn hole. Damn hole. These are the type. Damn hole. All right. I have no idea what what to bring. So I'm just going to bring a nav. We'll just bring a navigator. Cut the wind down a bit. And see if that works. If that doesn't work, then we'll uh, we'll make an adjustment. Kohong, practice. Rookie, practice. Hole number eight. Here we go. The pin placement on this hole is going to be, uh, so far, really the, they've moved the pins, but I don't know that they've, the first par three, it isn't a, where you have to bring it around more to the right. It is, that spot is a little bit, uh, that definitely does change that. The rest of the holes don't seem too too much different. There are differences, obviously, but it seems like we still got a shot at it. If I can get an opponent. Everyone in the game is lucky that they didn't have somebody like me telling them, like, hey, this would be the spot, because I would have picked the hardest-ass spots in the on every hole. Cataclysm. There's Max. I'm at Max B52. It's 0.8 per ring. I'm at the plus one mark. White rings off. Wedged in. I'm going to do a 3.9. So 3.9 divided by 0.8. 4.87 rings. Isn't it perfect? Not near enough. Not near enough. That 
was a 30%. And I went and looked up the numbers. And for a B-52... The minimum number is 0.8 per ring. Or, excuse me, the maximum number. It's 1.3 at min. And that was with a 30%. I did a 3.9 divided by 0.8. 4.87 rings. And was that far off. Look at that. Perfecto in the hole. All right. That hole is still doable. I think we can actually get a quite a quite a good run at it. But we're definitely gonna have I'm definitely gonna have to do a bigger adjustment. That's a hole I will have to go out and try and pull it so much that we over pull it. And end up on the other side of the flag, then we can kind of set the set the outer and the inner numbers. Alright, hole number nine. Hole number nine. What is hole number nine? Alright. Alright. So in one on one play, in tournament play we only play to the right. Okay? Because in tournament play if you play to the right you got an Alvi shot. And the goal is to get up into this zone. Now, if you're right in front of the shadow, that's fine. If you're past the shadow, it does get a little bit better, but it's not necessary. You really don't have to get any farther than the shadow. Getting around this bend, if you can bring out, I think if I bring out a rock and a kingmaker, it gets you through the zone. I can leave three rings of separation here, just a teeny bit of curl, and just try and bring it up. Um, and give myself a little bit of room. I used to take this shot in the past with a QB. You may have to bring out a little bit bigger ball just depending on the wind. And then your second shot going to the cup. This this is a great opportunity for an Albi here. And there is a slight adjustment, but it's one of those adjustments that you kind of chase. Feels like sometimes we just do a straight up adjustment and sometimes we add a little bit. It's difficult. If you go to the left hand side, it's not, you can get an easy eagle. You, you gotta work for it, but you can get an eagle. In one on one play, I go to the right every time because you can get an eagle. And most people will end up getting stuck out here and they will not get their eagle. But you have no shot for Alvi. So if you're playing a tournament, you gotta play to the right. And I'm going to play it with a, I'll play with a Titan, but in the tournament, in the rounds, depending on how the wind's blowing, well, it doesn't really matter. You're going to take the wind out either time. So if you want to cut the wind down, you bring a Kingmaker, but you can get this done with a three power ball. I'm actually curious to see, like, uh, Hole number nine. Here, let's back up. Let's make sure I'm in. Let's make sure I'm in rookie. I think I did a. I think I practiced one of the holes earlier, and I was in freaking expert. Seemed like the wind was a little high for rookie. I probably did. You're all like, yeah, dude, you practiced hole number five or hole number six. I, one of the holes, it seems like I, I probably screwed up and practiced it in expert. That's why I'm a Ricky. Damn it. You make Ricky ass mistakes like that. Questions? Don't answer that. Be nice. If I can get a damn opponent. Thank you, Junior. From the Port City dub.
three three. It's one point two per ring, so I do ten. I'm gonna do ten percent. So there's three six. Maybe helpful if I grab the rings. Put a little bit of curl on it just to bring it back to the center of the fairway. Isn't it perfect? Just trying to get up to the shadow. You don't have to. You, you can try and get farther, but you don't need to. You got a nice straight up shot from right here. Now I'm glad my opponent's going from that direction. You'll see. You can, and in one on one with a low power ball, this is where my number three bag comes in. I use the big topper. Big Dog Cataclysm, whichever whichever you have in your bag, and you bring it, trying to get it down that fairway like my opponent did. And you can see right there, they have they can get to the green, but you can't get over those trees. They're too close to the green. There's Max. Run just a titch of backspin. Okay, my cataclysm at max is 1.3 per ring. So 3.5 divided by 1.3 is 2.69 rings. There's two, seven. Hitting it perfect. a little bit too fast but that was definitely on track if I had my speed right that that would have been in the hole there you have it the that shot over that drive shot you don't want to do you want to bring out whatever equipment you need to bring out so you do not have to do any overpower or anything special over there You want to just slide it up to that shadow. It's easy to end up in trouble there, and it, it's hard to recover from that far back. And in one-on-one -on -one play, that right there would be an epic success. Like, you went that direction, you got on, you're going to get an easy eagle. It's dangerous to go to the other side unless you bring out the right equipment. Eagle. I'm not sure that any of the new pin placements really seriously affected the the shot. Maybe I'll change my mind on the second time through, but uh, it still seemed like we were we had we have pretty decent shots. We didn't have to change like there's some of the ones that they've changed where like we don't want to go to the cup like we used to, and here. It didn't seem like that was the case. They were just in different spots. All right. There you have a uh, preview. That's a scouting report for Kohung. So we got some, we've got at least the ability to, to see what kind of clubs we want to use and uh, what kind of ball and what direction we're thinking about going. That way we can set up a note sheet based off of that. I think we have great opportunities. There's a lot of really good holes here. We have, these par fours are, we do have some opportunities. We do have some low hanging fruit here. There's a good opportunity for us to pick a shot up. That par three. That par three has been a hit or miss deal for me. I have had more success on that one than the last par three. This is another great hole right here to get an Albion, and I don't know that the new pin placement really is going to affect it that much. It actually kind of opens up some shots that might not have been there before. Hole number four. Uh, we still got a great opportunity for hole one on that shot. This has always been. This is a tough, a, a tough par four to get a. Uh, an eagle on, but it's definitely doable. 
and I'm gonna and I think I'm gonna play this shot all week trying to get out into this sound. I've played this shot to try and get up through this neck, and I'm and I'm not sure. I think I was in long iron earlier when I was out here, and I'm not sure that I've been able to squeak myself past long iron into short iron coming from this direction, and there is some danger from this direction, so I may try this week just to continue to bring it out this way. Hole number six. This is another great hole. I think with the new pin placement and where I was at that I'm can't remember but I think they may have taken the rough bump out of play I think the pin the pins farther back that the flagpole is farther back now and I don't think there is a rough bump that we can do there but I'll have to I'll have to check the video on that to confirm this is another pretty tough par four I do like my odds of getting out into this zone I think we'll have a great shot from there. Anywhere, I think most people are going to end up doing rough bumps off of this, and that this right here, this area is going to be. We're going to see a lot of people ending up in the in the sand right over in this zone, and we're going to see a lot of people that end up in this zone where they overshot or over curled it. But this, I think, is our target box. If we brought out a top spin ball, you might be able to get a little bit farther down in there. Maybe. Hole number eight. This hole right here is... I've made hole ones on this hole, but I would not say that this is a hole that I have. But I, I kind of like the angle because the hole... The, it, if I remember correctly, the pin was kind of like back at three quarters of the length through the green, kind of dead center, and now it's off to the side. So if we're coming at it from this angle, it seems like we can get a little straighter on it. Hole number nine. You know, we have a great, great Albie opportunity on hole number nine. Um, I have made a lot of Albies on this, and this is a hole that can be, we can, we can win this game. All right, so there you have it. That was the uh, Kohang Resort nine hole cup kind of scouting report, preview, practice round all in one. Hey, you got some great shit right there. Thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully everybody has a great week and a great tournament, and I will catch you on the next one.